Story time about the girl who found out that I was hooking up with her boyfriend for three months straight. So a little background information. I was in high school and there was this boy that I really liked. And I had a crush on him since I was in like seventh grade. And the only time he would talk to me is whenever he wanted me to send him nudes. Well, in high school, he got a girlfriend. But while he was dating her, he would still ask me for nudes. And of course, I would still send them. Well, the summer before my junior year, I got a job at this restaurant. Well, almost every single day, the guy that I liked would bring his girlfriend in. Because guess what? His dad owned the restaurant. We're gonna call this boy Alex. Well, the one night I was supposed to close with this girl, but she ended up having to leave because of a family thing. So Alex came in to help me close. And while we were there, we were talking. And this was like the longest that we ever talked. Well, he said, do you want to come over to my house after we're done? So a bitch said yes. And we did the nasty and he took me home in the morning. Well, then he started coming in often to help me close. Well, three months later, as I'm closing, his girlfriend and her friends walk in like for part two. Part two about the girl who found out that I was hooking up with her boyfriend for three months straight. So like I said, the one night nobody could come in to help me close. And while I'm wiping off the counter, the girl and three of her friends walk in. I thought that she might have just forgot something because she was here earlier with her boyfriend. AKA the guy that I was hooking up with. So I was super nice. I was like, hey, like, what do you need? And literally, as soon as I finish my sentence, one of her friends comes up behind me and grabs me by my ponytail. And then his girlfriend, we're gonna call her Allie, she comes up and punches me straight in the middle of the mouth. Like literally, right in the middle of the mouth. I had to go to the dentist the next day because two of my teeth were missing. So then she goes and sits down at a table while she takes a video of three of her best friends beating the shit out of me. So then I'm sitting there, I could barely move. And then she plugs in one of those things that like guys shave their head with. And as soon as she figured out how to work the damn thing, it literally took her 10 minutes. My mom walks in because she had been waiting outside for 25 minutes at this point. So my mom called the cops and I pretty much won. My head wasn't shaved. I got a new set of teeth the next day and her boyfriend still hits me up. Story time about how my boyfriend's best friend tried to ruin our relationship. So a little background information. My boyfriend used to be best friends with this one girl. We're gonna call her Jamie. Well, Jamie and my boyfriend were best friends for years. And the friendship was more flirty than anything. Well, him and I got to know each other during track season. So we were always hanging out after school. And sometimes Jamie would be there too. Well, the one night him and I were on FaceTime and we were talking about how we really liked each other. So the next day we started dating. And I was good friends with Jamie too. But then after we started dating, she started acting really weird towards me. Like I would try to say hi whenever I saw her in the hallways. And she would just give me a dirty ass look. So then I told my boyfriend how I thought that she was really mad at me. And he said that he would talk to her. Well, a week before him and I started dating, she told us that there was this guy that she really wanted to ask to prom. And she said that she liked him for a while. Well, then my boyfriend said, apparently a few days ago, you were hitting on the boy that she was going to ask to prom. So then I started to connect the dots and I was like, oh shit, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend's best friend tried to ruin our relationship. So like I said, I started to connect the dots after that. And then I realized that she was talking about my boyfriend. We're just going to call him Josh. So as he's telling me this, I immediately get a FaceTime call from her. So I answer the phone and she says, well, I think I should just confront the situation now. So the first thing that she says is, you knew I liked Josh. Like, how could you do this to me? I had a poster board and everything. So I'm just like, well, why didn't you tell me that you liked him? And she goes, what the fuck do you mean? Like, you knew. But I was sitting there thinking about the fact that they were best friends for five years and nothing ever happened. So it's really not my fault. And then this girl has the nerve to say, I'm pretty sure if you just break up with him now, me and you can get past this and still be friends. So I said no. So then I called my boyfriend, told him that we talked it out. And I didn't even tell him about what she said or anything like that. Because I just wanted the situation to be over and done with. So a few weeks after that, she decided to get her brother involved. Her brother and Josh were best friends, by the way. Well, then her brother told Josh that him and I had been hooking up, like, for part three. Part two about my boyfriend's best friend trying to ruin our relationship. So, like I said, then she got her brother involved. And her brother and Josh were best friends. A little background information here. Josh had stopped talking to Jamie for those few weeks after she called me that night because she was making things really awkward in our relationship and just giving us a lot of problems. So the one night, Jamie's brother texts Josh and he's like, bro, I think it's mad sus how you cut her off when your girlfriend's the problem. So obviously Josh texted him and said, what do you mean? <laughs> and her brother was like, she hits me up all the time to hang out. We've been hooking up. I can even send you the nudes that she sent me and before i started dating josh there was this boy that i was talking to for like six months and i ended up sending him nudes and yes they got around the school but surprisingly josh had no idea about them so her brother sent josh the nudes and said bro here like see her face is in it and everything lesson learned don't put your face in nudes 
So then me and three other people explained to my boyfriend that those were from a while ago. And after that, he just blocked both of them and we're still together. Story time about how I catfished all the popular boys in my grade and they found out about it. So a little background information. I was at a new school. I just started there probably like four months before this happened. And I was best friends with this one girl. We're going to call her Kate. And Kate had a crush on this guy. We're going to call him Alex. And he liked her back, but she wanted to see if he was loyal. Well, at least that's what it was supposed to be at first. But then he started to actually fall in love with this bitch. So then I started feeling bad and I told my friend that I just wanted to end it right there. And she was like, no, let's keep going. This is so funny. Mind you, this was the boy that she liked. So at that point, I was like, whatever. And then he asked to meet up at the mall. So then we took him on a whole goose chase around the whole mall. Like we were like, oh, we're in this store. Never mind, we're in this one. And the only reason why we got away with it was because he thought he saw us in the one store. So then we broke up with him and we started talking to all the other popular boys. And on this fake account, we said that we went to a different school. Well, one of the kids at that school said that he never saw us there, like for part two. Part two about how I catfished all the popular boys in my school and they found out about it. So like I said, the one kid said, oh, I never saw you at my school. So then I just blocked him and thankfully that situation got left alone. Well, then after that, like I said, we started talking to all the other popular boys. We're going to call this Catfish Ashley. Well, at that point, everybody knew who Ashley was. Like I would literally be sitting in class and all the girls would be talking about how much they hate Ashley, how Ashley's such a hoe. Like all the girls despised her. Sorry, her. And they kind of had a reason to. Because we broke up so many relationships and everything. Well, the one night I'm having a sleepover with my friends. Well, Kate asked if she could come to the sleepover as if it wasn't obvious that she could come. Just a quick reminder, Kate was the one who I started the account with. So I was joking around with her and I was like, no, you can't come. So I wake up the next morning, right? And all the popular boys are blowing up my phone on my actual accounts, like for part three. Part three about how I catfished all the popular boys in my school and they found out. So like I said, I wake up the next morning and thankfully it was a Sunday. And like I said, I woke up to text messages from all of Alex's friend group. And all these text messages were like, are you the one running the Ashley account? We saw screenshots of all the messages between you and Kate. So I texted Kate and I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, how does everybody know? And she made some bullshit ass excuse saying that her brother took her phone and took pictures of all the conversations and sent them to everybody. Which obviously I knew that wasn't true. But after that, I went into a whole depression because everybody just kept coming at me for this fake account. Whatever, it was literally me and her who created it. She was the one who wanted to make it to fucking catfish this guy that she liked. So I wasn't going to school for a few days and my guidance counselor literally had to come to my house. Pretty much drag me out of the fucking house and bring me to school. So I sat in the guidance counselor's office all day and then I had to move schools. Part two of my mom sleeping with my history teacher to get me better grades. So like I said, I told my parents that I got a 97, she got a 33. And I was telling them how the handwriting didn't even look like mine and everything. And then my brother starts flipping out in front of my dad too. He goes, mom, are you fucking serious? You couldn't let her try and do this on her own. And I was super confused. Like I thought that maybe he was talking about my mom paid off the teacher. But then he said, yeah, dad, if you didn't know, mom's been fucking our history teacher to get us better grades. And then he goes, mom, you're such a fucking whore. And my mom's sitting there not even phased. She just took a drink of her wine and said, get the fuck upstairs now. Before my brother leaves the table, he goes, maybe you can fuck dad's boss too. Maybe he'll get a raise. And then I realized what was happening. And it's around 6.30 p.m. So after that, a lot of stuff happened. My dad obviously wanted to get a divorce at that point. So my dad took my brother and I to our grandparents. And we stayed with them for like two weeks. But then everybody at school found out. And we got made fun of a lot. And then after that, we moved schools. Story time about how I found out that my mom fucked my boyfriend. So a little background information. My mom had me whenever she was 15. So we were always super close because we were so close in age. Well, during my senior year of high school, I started dating this guy. I was 18, he was 20. Well, after dating for a little bit, it was time for me to go off to college. And we didn't want to do long distance, so we kind of just cut it off. And instead of going to college, he just wanted to work, so he stayed in my hometown. And he was pretty close with my mom, too, because during my school year, he got kicked out of his parents' house and came and stayed with us for like a month. And we're going to call him Bryce. Well, I get a text from my mother the one day and she's like, hey, honey, Bryce wants to know if he can come stay here. His parents kicked him out again. And I was like, no, that's weird. Like, we're not even dating. What the fuck? And her response was, well, honey, I'm a good person, so I'm not going to listen to what you say on this one. He's going to come stay with us. And I wasn't even living there at the time and she was going to let him stay there. Like for part two. 
part two about how my mom fucked my boyfriend. So like I said, my mom was trying to be a good person, so she let Bryce stay there. Well, then COVID hit. And my college was basically like, yeah, you guys can't stay here anymore. Go somewhere else. So I packed up my things and I went home. And she told Bryce that he couldn't stay there anymore because I didn't feel comfortable with it. As she should. Well, then she started acting really weird. Like she would leave the house at two in the morning and wouldn't come back until like eight in the fucking morning. And the one night while she was making dinner, I saw a text from Bryce pop up on her phone. So I opened it and there were no text messages except one from Bryce saying, I won't, don't worry. But I didn't ask her about it because I trusted her. Well, the one night I was going to a party and I was in charge of bringing the alcohol. Well, on my way to the party, I realized I forgot the alcohol. So I pull up to my house and I see Bryce's truck outside. So I went around to the window and in the living room, I could see my mom and Bryce fucking on the couch. I took a video, put it on Facebook. And after that, she was labeled a homewrecker in my small town. After that, I found out they had a whole relationship. Story time about the girl who was absolutely obsessed with me in high school. So it was my junior year in high school. And I'm just going to tell you guys the first story of how I knew that she was absolutely obsessed with me and wanted to be me. Well, I had been dating this guy for like a month. And I sent him nudes. Well, my nudes got spread around the school. And everybody knew they were mine. Until this one girl, and we're going to call her Addie, started saying that they were hers. I guess one of my friends was talking about it in class and they were like, OMG, did you hear that her nudes got leaked? AKA mine. And Addie was sitting at the same table and she said, no, those are my nudes. And at first I thought this girl was just trying to be nice. I was like, oh, well, that's nice of her, you know, like maybe she's just trying to say that so that way nobody will bully me, I guess. Well, the one day I texted her about it and I was like, hey, like, you don't have to do that. It's fine. I'll take responsibility for it. I did it. And she was like, what are you talking about? Those are my nudes. Like for part two. Story time about part two about the girl who was obsessed with me. So like I said, she basically told me that those were her nudes, even though I took the pictures and I knew they were mine. But I was like, okay, whatever. I'm not going to argue with her. Well, then I get a text from my boyfriend and he goes, what the fuck? You're so weird. Why would you send me somebody else's nudes? And I'm just sitting there like, what the fuck? And I tried to explain to him that I had no fucking clue why this girl was saying they were hers. But then he said that it was weird as fuck and he broke up with me. So like a week later, I see them walking around school together. And my friends tell me that they're now dating. And I really wasn't that mad about it. I was like, okay, maybe that's the only way that she could think of to get a boyfriend. Well, I forgot that my Instagram was logged in on his phone because he had super bad trust issues and wanted to make sure I wasn't cheating on him. So I text him and I'm like, hey, can you take my Instagram off your phone? And I saw that he read my text message, but I got no response. Well, a week later, you guys are never going to guess what fucking happened. Like for part three. Part three about the girl who was obsessed with me. So like I said, I texted him and I got no response back. So I run into him the next day at school. And I'm like, hey, did you get my text? And he's like, text about what? And I was like, taking my Instagram off your phone. And he was like, oh yeah, Addie did it. Don't worry. And I didn't think anything of it because, you know, I'm like, oh, well, she's done torturing me. Well, I was very wrong. So in my first period, I went to go sit with my group of friends because all three of us had that class together. And when I walk in, I realize that Addie is sitting in my seat. So I pull up a chair to the table and they were all ignoring me and texting each other right next to me. So I was like, okay, what's wrong? And one of my friends goes, oh, nothing. Just the fact that you DM Gigi and I's boyfriends saying that we were whores and that they should date you. By the way, Gigi was my other friend. And after that, this bitch Addie has the nerve to make the comment, that's really fucked up. Why would you do that? So then I beat her ass and lost all my friends. Crazy ass story time about how I almost got away with sneaking out. A little background information. It was the summer of my sophomore year in high school and my parents are super strict. Like they had a tracker on my phone. They had a tracker in my car. They have cameras all over my house. And my curfew was 7.30 even on weekends. Well, this boy that I really liked was throwing this party. And I begged my parents to go and of course they said no. So my friends and I came up with this elaborate plan on how I was going to sneak out of my house and go to this party. Well, one of my friend's brothers had his license. So at 11 o'clock after everybody fell asleep, they parked in my neighbor's driveway. Before everybody fell asleep, I made sure to put my ladder up to my window from my bathroom. And because it was in the back of the house, there were really no cameras around there. Well, skip ahead, I couldn't get down the ladder. So my friend's brother had to come around and try to move the ladder. But I was still too scared to go down the ladder by myself. 
So her brother crawled up the ladder, and once he was on the roof, he tried to help me get down. Well, then he fell like for part two. Part two about how I almost got away with sneaking out. So like I said, he fell off the roof. Let me elaborate on that. So while I was going down the ladder, my foot slipped. So he grabbed a hold of my hand, and I started falling along with the ladder. So then he grabbed a hold of the ladder, tried to pull it back, but when he did that, he flipped over the ladder. Well, he fell through this glass table that was on the deck that was around my pool, and everybody in my house woke up. My dad came running outside. Oh, and her brother wasn't moving after that. So my dad called an ambulance, and my friend who was with her brother had to call her parents. And pretty much after that, I got grounded for a full year. I didn't have a phone or anything. They took my car away. They also drilled my windows shut. My friend didn't get grounded because her parents knew that she was going to this party. Oh, and her brother was in a coma for three months. Story time, my boyfriend caught me cheating on him with his older brother. A little background information. I was a sophomore in high school and him and I had been dating for about three months. And every day after school, I would go over to his house. Sometimes he would be late coming home though because he would have soccer practice. But I would go to his house anyways because I was friends with his sister, who was also in the same grade as me. Well, his older brother was a senior in high school. Well, the one day I went over his house and his sister wasn't home. She was tutoring at school or something and neither were his parents. So I texted my boyfriend saying that I was just gonna go home and he said, no, stay, I'll be there in like 30 minutes. While I was sitting on the couch, his brother comes downstairs. So he comes and sits on the couch next to me and puts on a movie. And he could have sat anywhere because they had a big ass couch, but he sat right next to me. So we start talking and a little bit into the movie, he gets closer to me and one thing led to another and then we were in his room. And literally two minutes later, we heard the front door open. Like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend caught me cheating on him with his older brother. So we heard the door open downstairs. And at this point, we were both naked. So I ran to my boyfriend's room as fast as I could. And as soon as he came upstairs, he saw me without any clothes on. So then I had to play it off like I was ready to do the nasty with him. So for the next two weeks straight, I was going to my boyfriend's house and doing the nasty with his brother while he was at soccer practice. Well, the one day after his brother and I did the nasty, I fell asleep in his brother's bed. So my boyfriend came upstairs, and he didn't see me anywhere, so he was knocking on his brother's door. And we didn't hear anything because we were sleeping, so he just opened the door. And I woke up, and he was screaming at both of us. So him and his brother got into a fight, like literally fist fighting. I was trying to break it up, but then I was also trying to put clothes on. And when my boyfriend saw me trying to get dressed, he took my clothes and told me to get out. And when I wouldn't get out because I didn't have clothes, so he literally grabbed me and threw me outside. And then he came back and threw a towel at me, so I had to walk home with only a towel. Story time, my parents found out that I was dating a white boy. So a little background information. My parents are super strict, especially my dad. And on top of that, my dad thought that races should not mix. One of his sayings was, you don't see a blue jay fucking a pigeon. AKA, white people and black people should not be together. Sounds fucking stupid. Yeah, I know. Anyways, like I was saying, it was my freshman year of high school and I had been dating this boy for two months. And of course, he was white. And we had to keep it super low-key because if any of my friends found out about it, they would have fucking told my dad. Now when I look back at it, those weren't good friends at all. Anyways, every Friday, my boyfriend and I would go to the movies. And we would go to this theater that was 45 minutes away because nobody that I knew would be there. The only person that knew that I was dating a white boy was my sister. Well, the one day after the movies, I couldn't get a ride home, so I had to get a ride home with him and his family. And as soon as I pulled up, my parents were waiting outside, like for part two. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me address it real quick. So I just shouldn't do story times that are sent in by people of different races. Because to me right there, that sounds racist. This girl clearly sent the story time in to me because she wanted it to be out there and she wanted it to be heard. Not to mention that shit actually happens to a lot of people. And what she sent me, I read word for word in my story time. So personally, I don't care whether a person is black, white, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. If they wanna send their story time in to me and they want me to tell it, I'll do that. Anyways, part two is coming soon. 
part two about how my parents found out that I was dating a white boy. So like I said, my sister couldn't come pick me up, so I had to get a ride with him and his family. And what do you know, as soon as we pull up to my fucking house, my dad is standing on the porch waiting for me. So I told his parents to drive around the block one more time while I called my sister and told her to distract my dad. So as we're driving up to my house again, I see that my dad isn't on the porch. So I run into the house before he could see me getting out of a white boy's car. So a few months go by and we're still dating, very low key. And the one night at 3 in the morning, I get woken up by my sister. And she says, you better delete any pictures that you have of you and you know who off your phone. And you better come up with the story right now. Because one of your friends took pictures of you walking with him in the hallways and kissing him behind the stairwell at school. So after I deleted everything off my phone, a few seconds later, my dad came into my room screaming his head off. He was so mad. I ended up getting my ass beat. And I also got grounded from my phone for four months. But after that, my mom ended up leaving my dad. And then him and I got back together. Story time, my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend. So my boyfriend and I have been dating for two years, but we were on and off all the time. It was a super toxic relationship. Like he would try to get with other girls and I would try to get with other guys to make him jealous, blah, blah, blah. Well, a week before Christmas, him and I broke up again. And I had my best friend sleep over that whole week because her parents were in Ireland. And my boyfriend lived right down the street from me. Like it was probably a two minute walk to his house. Well, for the first three nights, my best friend would go on a jog every night and she would be gone for like two hours. I would literally have to go unlock the door at one in the morning for her to get back in my house. Well, I think the third night that she slept over, she came back in different clothes. And I realized that the sweatshirt she was wearing was my boyfriend's favorite sweatshirt. But I didn't really think anything of it because she never really showed interest in my boyfriend. But clearly I was oblivious. Anyways... So that same night, I wake up in the middle of the night and she's on the phone with someone. And it sounded exactly like my boyfriend. So I asked her who it was, but she couldn't give me an answer, like for part two. Hi everyone, so I kind of wanted to come on here and give you guys a life update because I know I haven't posted in a few days, so yeah. So pretty much I've been really busy these past few days because my boyfriend and I are moving in two days. Tomorrow we have to pack everything because we rarely have anything packed. And it's just super annoying because the people that we're renting the apartment from, they haven't been contacting us and stuff like that. So we've been really busy trying to get in contact with them, switch things over to our new place. So yeah, pretty much next time you guys see me, I will be in my new apartment. Sorry I haven't posted in a few days, but yeah, that's kind of a life update. Love you guys. Part two of how my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend. So she told me not to worry about it and I was like, all right, whatever. So the next day my boyfriend shows up at my house asking to get back together. Not a surprise, by the way. And of course I said, okay, we can be back together, blah, blah, blah. So that night while I'm in my room, my best friend's on the phone and she has her AirPods in so I couldn't hear who it was. And she was like, okay, I'll be there in five minutes. And when I asked her where she was going, she wouldn't tell me. Well, she left her phone at my house. And because she usually tells me everything, I thought that something sus was going on. So I went through her phone. And I see that she's been texting this guy, Jay, a lot. And as I'm going through their conversation, there's one text that says, I don't care if she finds out. Just sneak over to my house while you're there. So I check the phone numbers and obviously it's my boyfriend. And her parents are really strict, like she was only supposed to be at my house that week, nowhere else. So I may have made up some stories that she had drugs in her bag and that she was forcing me to do drugs with her. So her parents came home early from their trip. They sent her to military school and I broke up with my boyfriend. Story time, my boyfriend found out that I had an OnlyFans. So my boyfriend and I have been together for probably two years. And I had just turned 18 and we decided that we were going to move in together. We both worked full-time jobs. I was a waitress, he worked at Walmart. And the restaurant that I worked at was literally a two-minute walk from Walmart. And I was forced to get a job there by my boyfriend. Because he had super bad trust issues. I know you guys are going to be like, oh, well, I can see why. No, no was because of this rumor that went around right before we graduated that me and his best friend made out at a party child anyways back to the story so then covid hit and it got to the point where him and i couldn't pay our bills or anything like that so he got a job working for his uncle and i went on unemployment but it still wasn't helping but my best friend was a stripper and she told me that she had an OnlyFans account and that she was making really good money off of it so since i was home every day doing absolutely nothing i decided that i would make an OnlyFans account and I didn't tell my boyfriend about it, like for part two. 
Part two about how my boyfriend found out that I had an OnlyFans. So like I said, I made the OnlyFans and I didn't tell him about it. And I was only putting stuff on there like twice a week. But then my friend promoted me and I started making a lot more money. But then I started putting stuff on there every time that my boyfriend would go to work. So a month goes by and my boyfriend realizes that I have way more money than I did before. And he keeps asking me about it, but I tell him don't worry about it. Which definitely seemed really sus. Anyways, the one day while he's at work, I'm taking some pics for my OF. And I'm blasting my music. And I turn around and lo and behold, who do you think was standing in the doorway? My boyfriend. And he has his phone out and he's recording me. So then he started explaining to me that because since I gave him such bad trust issues and I wouldn't tell him where I was getting the extra money, he set up cameras in the house. And he's been watching me for two weeks straight. And he's still recording on his phone at this time. So we broke up and now there's a video of me half naked on YouTube and him exposing me. Story time about the guy who was obsessed with me. We're gonna call him Ryan. Well, Ryan had a crush on me for a long time. And one night, one of our friends asked me to go to a party with them. And Ryan was gonna be the GD. And everything was good. We were all having a great time at the party. Well, Ryan and I went off to one of the bathrooms. And we started making out. And while we're making out, he goes, I really want to fuck you, but I can't. And I'm just like, why? And he said it was because he couldn't get it up. And obviously he was embarrassed about it, which is understandable. So I left the bathroom and didn't plan on telling anybody about it. Until I walk over to a group of my guy friends and they're telling me that apparently Ryan told everybody that we fucked. So at that point, I didn't give a fuck and I told them what actually happened. AKA that he couldn't get hard. And apparently he was mad at me after that, but I had no idea. So he said, do you still want me to take you home? So I said, yeah. And now that he drove me home, he knew where I lived. And then I got a text from one of his friends, like for part two. Part two about the guy who was obsessed with me. So like I said, as soon as I got dropped off, his friend Ella texted me. And she was like, oh, it was so wrong for you to say that he couldn't get it up and a bunch of other nonsense. And I just brushed it off and I was like, whatever. So I went to sleep and the next morning that I woke up, so my house had like a gate to get in and there were locks on it and all the locks were broke. And my stepdad also saw that he slashed my fucking tires. I ended up telling him everything that happened that night and my stepdad's 32 and Ryan's 22. So they're only a 10 year difference. He basically gave me an option. He was like, either I can call the cops or I can go beat this kid's ass. I was like, okay, just call the cops. So we called the cops and they ended up catching him on the surveillance camera, like of him breaking the locks and slashing my tires and everything like that. So then they found him and arrested him. And let me get this straight. If he just wouldn't have lied about it, then it would have never came out that like he couldn't get it up. He just had to go and tell everybody that we fucked. Story time, my gym teacher's wife found out that he was having an affair with me. So a little background information. I was a sophomore in high school, and the one night my friends and I were playing Truth or Dare. Well, a little bit into the game, my friends dared me to download Tinder and message the first five guys that I saw. And what do you know, the last guy that I saw on there was my gym teacher. So obviously I messaged him and I was like, hey, OMG, it's blah, blah, blah from your third period class. And obviously I wasn't expecting him to answer, but he did. And he was like, oh, this is weird. How are you? So after that, my friends were like, oh, okay, like it's time to delete it. So I pretended that I did. And when they left, I started messaging him more. So we had been messaging that whole week and one thing led to another. Next thing I knew, he was sneaking me out of my house at 2 a.m. And he was like 32, so he wasn't that old. Well, for the next month, we were going to restaurants that were like an hour away. Almost every weekend, he would rent out a hotel for us. Well, the one night his wife was supposed to be out with some friends. So he invited me over like for part two. Part two about how my gym teacher's wife found out that he was having an affair with me. So like I said, his wife was supposed to be gone the whole night because she was at the bar with her friends and they were supposed to get in a hotel. So he invited me over. So we went swimming in his pool, then we did the nasty. Well, a few hours later, him and I were sitting on the couch watching a movie. And his wife kept calling him. But he just kept ignoring it, saying that she was fine and he didn't want to answer the call and ruin our time together. So we go upstairs, lay down to go to sleep. And it's like 4 a.m. at this point. So I shit you not, literally an hour later, I wake up to his wife carefully shaking me to wake me up. And she goes, honey, come downstairs. I don't want to wake him up. He has work tomorrow. And I'm like, what the actual fuck? So I went downstairs and she's like, sit at the table with me. So we're sitting at the table and she's like, I hope that we can keep this quiet. She was like, my husband's done this before. 
and that she can't have any of her friends knowing or anybody at school because she's a PTA mom. So she offered me money to keep my mouth shut. And then she let me go back upstairs and lay with him. What the fuck? Story time about the guy who pretended to be gay in high school to get closer to all the girls. So it was the first day of my freshman year. And at lunch, this guy came and sat with me and my friends. And we were super confused because he was like one of the popular boys. And we were like, oh, why aren't you sitting with your friends? And he's like, oh, because ever since I came out as gay, they don't want to be friends with me anymore. And they're being super mean to me. So we felt really bad and we started getting to know him and he was actually a really cool person. So we started inviting him to our sleepovers and everything like that. And because he was gay, we felt really comfortable getting dressed around him, talking about things that we wouldn't talk about in front of anybody. So like two months go past and at this point he knows so much about us, like stuff that nobody else knew. Like, he even knew that one of my friends was born with both private parts, which is something that she never told anybody except for me and the girls in my friend group. But we're all on FaceTime the one day, and my friend goes, oh, have you ever seen boobs before? And he goes, no. So we all lift up our shirt, like, for part two. Okay, part two about the guy who pretended to be gay in high school to get closer to all the girls. So like I said, we all lift up our shirts and because we were on FaceTime, we couldn't see if he screenshotted anything. And then the one night we were having a sleepover. And he was really upset that night because apparently the popular boys were making fun of him. Because the only reason why he was gay is because he couldn't get with any girls. So me and my friends thought of a solution. But like, we were just trying to be nice. And now looking on it, that is the dumbest shit that we've ever done. And we're all like, oh, well, why don't you just say that you did the nasty with all of us? And he was like, well, I don't think they'll believe it. Even if you guys said, yeah, you did do it. So we were like, okay, then let's do it for real. So that night, we did the nasty. All five of us. So that morning, we all wake up and he's literally gone. Like, he didn't wake us up to say goodbye, which wasn't normal. So the weekend goes past. Monday, we go to school. And in the morning, my friends and I have time to walk around and everybody's just staring at us. Like for part three. Part three about the guy who pretended to be gay to get closer to all the girls. So like I said, we got to school and everybody's just looking at us. And all of a sudden we get tagged in this Instagram account. And there's a video of all five of us doing the nasty in my bedroom. There's pictures of me and my friends getting undressed. And there's a screenshot of the FaceTime where we all showed our boobs. And under the post, he was exposing a bunch of shit about us. And my one best friend was literally crying so hard because everybody now knew that she was born with, like, both parts. And also, after gym class, we would just tell him to come in the locker room, and the teacher didn't care because he was gay. So there were also a bunch of pictures of other girls on there, too. I'm not even going to talk about the legal trouble, but my parents made me move schools because they cared about my image and they didn't want me hanging out with any of those friends anymore. He got expelled. The teacher got fired for that bullshit. So that just ruined having a gay best friend for me. Oh, also, my parents saw me have a fivesome in my bedroom. Story time. My boyfriend wouldn't let me break up with him, so I cheated on him with his best friend. So we're going to call my boyfriend Jay and his best friend Mike. Well, I met these two boys through my best friend, and I really liked Mike. Mike and I would talk all the time. We would FaceTime 24-7. But whenever the subject of dating came up, he said that he couldn't because his best friend really liked me. So he was trying to set me up with Jay, but not really because he really liked me. So I was like, okay, fine, whatever. I'll date Jay for a little bit, and then I'll break up with him. Worst mistake of my fucking life. Every time I would try to break up with this kid, he would be like, I'm going to kill myself now. And he would send me videos with him holding up a knife to his neck, cutting his arms whenever I would say we're breaking up. So pretty much I was forced into that relationship. He was manipulative as fuck. It was just not a good situation. Well, the one day Jay was like, oh, do you want to come over Mike's house with me? And of course I said, yeah, because I literally was still in love with Mike, his best friend. And my parents were super strict, so I had to sneak over there like for part two. Part two of how my boyfriend wouldn't let me break up with him, so I cheated on him with his best friend. For the new people, Mike is the best friend and Jay is the guy who I was dating. Anyway, so we get to Mike's house, right? And we're all hanging out and I was giving Mike a little bit more attention than I was giving Jay. Because obviously, I wasn't interested in Jay. So Jay decided to act like he was pissed off at me, right? And he walks out of the house, right? To see if I would chase after him. Like, obviously I'm not going to. So Mike and I are sitting there watching him walk down the street because he said he was going home. So Mike and I were sitting on the couch and we started making out. 
And then we heard the fucking front door open. And Jay's like, I can't believe you didn't come and talk to me after that, blah, blah, blah. What is this relationship? So then Mike steps in and he's like, yo, you need to drop her. She just tried to make out with me, blah, blah, blah. And I sat there and I was like, yeah, it's true. So Jay starts bawling his eyes out and goes to the fucking kitchen to grab a knife. So after that, Mike called the cops on him and Mike and I are finally dating now. Story time about my extremely toxic boyfriend. So when I was in high school, I was dating this boy for three months. We're gonna call him Nick. And my friends hated him because he was super mean to all of them, but he was super nice to me. Well, after dating for about a month, he started acting super weird. Like he stopped paying attention to me. He didn't want to hang out with me. And I was going through a depression this time because my dad had just died. I wasn't really doing my makeup anymore. I wouldn't do my hair anymore. And I started gaining a little bit of weight because all I would do is sleep in bed all the time. Eat 24-7. Well, soon our two months was coming up. And he wanted to go to this party. So I literally begged him to FaceTime me. And I was asking him, oh, what should I wear? So I put on this dress that was really tight fitting, which I was already super uncomfortable about wearing because of the fact that I had a little bit of a belly now. So he picks me up, we go to this party, and I go and I start hanging out with a few of my friends. Well, one of my friends comes over and shows me something that he posted on his private story, Life of Part 2. Part 2 about my extremely toxic boyfriend. So like I said, one of my friends comes over and shows me something that he posted on his private story. It was literally a screen recording of me trying to get the dress on that was super tight fitting. And then a screenshot of my face after when I had the dress on. Because obviously I was upset that it didn't fit the way it did before. And the video said, imagine having a girlfriend that was fat as hell. Ooh, I have one. Then the picture of me said, ooh, she's sad now. Like, what the fuck? Go to the gym and lose some weight. On his private story, which had one of my friends. And she was super pretty. And apparently he tried getting with her. That's a whole nother story. So after that, I Ubered home from the party. And as soon as I got home, I started crying and I told my older brother about it. So he literally drove us back to the party and beat the absolute shit out of my boyfriend. Well, someone called the cops, my brother spent a night in jail, and my boyfriend got an underage. And my brother won't talk to me now because I'm back with my boyfriend. Story time about how my best friend found out that I hooked up with her boyfriend. A little background information. I was in high school, and I was best friends with this girl we're gonna call her M. Well, M and I both had boyfriends, and they were also best friends. But I was super close with her boyfriend. Because we had been best friends for like three years before they even started dating. Well, the one night we're all at my house and we're all drinking, having a good time. And I always felt like I had feelings for him, aka my best friend's boyfriend. Well, my boyfriend had to go to his house to get some clothes and M was the only one sober, so she drove him. So her boyfriend and I are sitting in the living room and we're gonna call him Nate. Well, Nate and I get to talking and we were saying how crazy it would be if we started dating. And then I told him that I had feelings for him. And he said that he did too. So we decided to be terrible people and we hooked up. And after that, we definitely knew that there weren't any feelings there. But he went and got a shower because he had my lipstick all over him and he was really sweaty. Then my best friend got back like for part two. Part two of how my best friend found out that I hooked up with her boyfriend. So like I said, her and my boyfriend finally got back to my house. And she goes, oh, where's Nate? And I told her that Nate was in the shower. I told her that whenever he was trying to pour a drink, he spilt vodka all over his clothes. So we're all sitting there and then he comes out in the exact same clothes that he had on before. And she was like, oh, I thought you spilled vodka all over your clothes. And he was like, uh, oh, we put them in the dryer. So she literally got up, went over and smelt his clothes and they did not smell like vodka. So after that, she starts flipping the fuck out. She's like, why don't your fucking clothes smell like vodka? And then he came up with something. He was like, oh, she got confused. I spilled water all over my clothes. So as we're all watching a movie, I realized that Nate has a hickey on his neck from me so i started having her drink a lot because maybe she wouldn't remember and she would have thought that she gave it to him well i woke up the next morning and nobody was at my house and when i went into the bathroom i saw that all my hair was cut off story time about the boy across the street who used to stalk me so a little background information my parents and i moved into a new house that was literally five minutes from where i used to live but i went to private school and almost all the other kids in my town went to the public school. So I didn't really know a lot of the kids in my town. Well, a week after we moved in, our neighbors across the street invited us to a barbecue. While we were there, I started talking to our neighbor's older son. And him and I started to get along really well. Like, in a flirty way. <laughs> Their older son was a senior. I was a sophomore. 
and their younger son was a freshman. Well, I kind of talked to the younger son, but he was just like giving me really weird vibes. So for the next few weeks, I started hanging out with their older son a lot and we would talk all the time. Well, the one day whenever I went over their house, it was super weird. His younger brother kept saying, oh, I think I know you from somewhere. Like, I swear I know you. And I'm just like, okay. Well, the one morning I was waiting outside for my mom to pick me up because she worked night shifts and she would just grab me and then take me to my school. And I saw him in his window watching me like for part two. Part two about the boy across the street who used to stalk me. So like I said, I saw him watching me outside his window, but I didn't want to overthink it. So I was just like, no, maybe he's looking at something else. Well, this all started a month after I moved in. Well, it started happening more frequently. So then I told his older brother, we're just going to call the younger brother Mac. So he talked to Mac and then everything was fine for a week. Just a little information real quick. For the public school, the bus would arrive at 740. My private school started at 7 o'clock. So my mom would come and get me at 615 because my school was kind of far away. So like I said, it was a week later. Every morning that I would go outside to wait for my mom, Mac would be standing on his porch watching me. Oh, but it gets worse. So one night I was in my bedroom, right? And this is like some scary movie shit. I kept seeing something run past my window. My bedroom was on the first floor. So I told my dad about it and he put cameras outside. Well, Mac's older brother told me that Mac was always interested in my life. So me being a smart ass bitch, I told his older brother that our cameras didn't work like for part three. Part three about the boy that lived across the street who used to stalk me. So like I said, I told his older brother that our cameras didn't work anymore. Knowing that he would tell Mac. Because he had it in his head for some reason that Mac wasn't obsessed with me. And the reason why I told him our cameras didn't work was because Mac was watching while the cameras were being set up outside. And after that, everything stopped. Except he would still be outside every single morning on his fucking porch watching me. So the one night while I'm sleeping, I wake up to some noise right outside my window. And my bed was on the same wall as the window. So I could see who was right outside my window, but they couldn't see me. Well, I look and guess who the fuck it is. It's Mac trying to get inside of my fucking window. So I quietly call my dad and it's like three in the morning. So I tell my dad what's going on. So he goes outside and nobody's there. Well, the next day we check the cameras. There's footage of him jerking off outside my window, trying to break into my room with a fucking crowbar. Luckily, I was staying at a friend's that night, taking pictures of me outside my window. So we showed his parents. Then we moved and they sent him to a mental hospital.